let's recap game week 12 of the 2023-24 FPL season. And for myself, what was expected to be quite a bad week, I only only got myself a season high 97 points, which shot me up in the rankings with a green arrow. And I was very, very happy with this, I must say. Now, look, there was some fortune that went my way. I transferred in Ben White. He didn't play, and I got Kostas Timikas's 15 points off the bench. And I tell you what, when I saw Ben White wasn't playing, I was absolutely fuming. And then when I was watching that Liverpool game, and Kostas Timikas was getting a clean sheet, getting a couple assists. I mean, he was getting some lucky assists. That second assist, he knocked it in the direction of Diogo Jota, and he created that all himself and just banged it in from outside the box. But let's take a look at the UK FC League for game week 12. I actually did lead the league for this week. I got 97 points. Coming in second was Kinder and Burmo with 92 points. That was Marco, and I've never actually realized how good a name Kinder and Burmo is. And in third, it was J12 who got himself 88 points. So a high scoring week for the top three but I come out on top for the first time this season. <laughs> Let's take a look at the transfers I made. I brought in Jared Bowen in for the injured James Madison. That, I mean, that Spurs attack without James Madison, that crowded monster, they're playing Hjoiberg instead of him. So they're playing a lot, a lot more of a flag in midfield. Instead of playing Sara and Basuma in those deeper positions and Magus at the number 10, they're playing a more flat midfield. Basuma and Sara in midfield too with Hjoiberg holding it. It's a really, really just, it's lacking creativity. And um, obviously Madison had to go. And I also think this, you know, that with injuries and suspensions in the back line, this will also affect the clean sheets going forward as well as the tough runner fixtures. So I also moved on Pedro Porro. Who I brought in for James Madison, it was Jared Bowen. It was an obvious choice for me. His form is absolutely elite at the moment. And on the fixture difficulty rating, he just had Nottingham Forest at home. Next up, he's got Burnley away and Crystal Palace at home. He got a return against Forest. I'm expecting the same return against Burnley and Palace. Then moves on to Spurs away, which, you know, it's a derby and Spurs are vulnerable. Then Fulham away, then Wolves at home, then Man United at home. I think he can get returns in all of those. And then who I brought in for Pedro Porro was Ben White. And Mikel Arteta, for some reason, just said absolutely nothing about him being injured. So he ended up not even being in the match chase squad, which turned out to be fortunate for me in the end. Let's take a look at the team I had. Had either Alfonso Areola against Forrest at home or Robert Sanchez against Man City at home. I was obviously always going to take Areola, but West Ham's defense at the moment just looks absolutely roasted. I mean, Zuma and Aguera are two not bad players, but Alfonso Areola cannot keep a clean sheet to save his life. He did concede two goals, but he got the bonus point for the three saves. I mean, it's just a weekly two-pointer from Alfonso Areola or Robert Sanchez. Doesn't matter who I play. Oh, I'm getting two points from them. Now, the thing to mention about Robert Sanchez is his fixtures are very, very good coming up. So Areola in the next few weeks, he's got Burnley away, Palace at home, then Spurs away, then Fulham away, then Wolves at home. There's some decent fixtures. Um, now, while Robert Sanchez in the next three weeks has Newcastle, Brighton, and Man United, after that, from game week 16 to game week 24, Everton away, Sheffield United at home, Wolves away, Palace at home, Luton away, Fulham at home, then Liverpool away, but then Wolves at home, Palace away. There's some really, really good fixtures with an improving Chelsea. So Robert Sanchez will be, will be my keeper for the long term. And I think Sanchez and Ariola, I'm fine with rotating those throughout the season because realistically, there are no clean sheets in FPL this year, even for defenders. Costas Timikas, very, very fortunate. As I said, Timikas was on my bench and Ben White was on my field, Burnley at home. And if Ben White did play, they did not even keep a clean sheet. So that would have been even worse. But Ben White came off and Kostas Timikas. I mean, that first half performance, and first of all, his midweek performance against Toulouse was absolutely terrible. So I couldn't believe he actually started. And then once that, that first half, I thought he was terrible on the ball. Second half, didn't consider a goal. Got two assists. I mean, that first assist for the goal for Salah was absolutely brilliant from Tim McCarthy. He just kept the ball in play, got to the back post, and Salah put it home. Look, I don't usually enjoy watching Liverpool play, and I didn't enjoy watching Liverpool win, but um, there's a little bit of a sweet taste when it's the FPL players combining. Matty Cash with two points against Fulham at home. Matty Cash cannot buy a clean sheet. Um, I've had Matty Cash for quite a while now. I've had Matty Cash since game week eight. Um, game week 8, he didn't provide a clean sheet. Game week 9, he didn't provide a clean sheet. Uh, game week 10, he did provide a clean sheet, but got booked. Game week 11, he conceded two goals and only played 58 minutes, so that was a zero. And then this week, he got two points with no clean sheet. Matty Cash, I'm going to be moving on very, very soon. I'm probably going to move Matty Cash on. Um, my plan's in game week 16. I mean, this week, he's got Spurs away, which isn't the most awful fixture. Plus, I've got more important issues to fix up. Then he's got Bournemouth away after that. 
And then game week 15, I'm just going to have to suck up Nan City at home and hopefully he can do something because, again, I've got more important plans. I'm probably going to get move Diaby to Burma that week considering Brentford move on to their really good fixtures and Diaby moves on to Villa's really bad fixtures. And then game week 16, when they've got Arsenal at home, I'm probably going to try and move Matty Cash to Kyle Walker. And I tell you what, Man City from game week 16 onwards, they look unbelievable. Luton away, Palace at home. Then they've got a blank in game week 18. Then Everton away, Sheffield United at home. In game week 20, with Sheffield United at home, could actually end up being a double game week. So that game week, tw um, game week 20 could look really, really good for City players. If you triple up like me, like I'm planning to, on Walker, Haaland, Alvarez, that could look really, really good. Then Diogo Dallo, very, very surprised. I put him on my field, praying he'd start, and it ended up Aaron Wan-Bissaka missed due to illness. And he kept himself a clean sheet, and he actually played quite well. Now look, I think Regwalon looked really good at left back. I think that left footed balance is really what United needed. So I've got a lot, and I think Wan-Bissaka is first choice with Tenard um, over Delo. So although Everton away is coming up, I think I do need to get rid of Delo soon. I think Wan-Bissaka is just going to get far more playing time than him. Uh, far more playing time than him. I would mention that Wan Bissaka might play midweek, then Delo might play on the weekend for rotation with the Champions League, but Ten Hag does not like to rotate, so I think there's a big chance of Wan Bissaka playing midweek and the weekend and back to midweek. United's fixtures aren't bad, but they're not great. Everton away, Newcastle away, Chelsea at home, Bournemouth at home, and then moves into Liverpool, West Ham, Aston Villa. It gets really, really tough up until game week 19, pretty much up until the end of the year. Yeah, I think I do need to move Delo. I'm happy with the clean sheet I got from him. Jared Bowen, I brought him in this week for Nottingham Forest at home and I'm really really happy with his returns he looks absolutely phenomenal at the moment he's only blanked three times since game week five and that was against Man City Newcastle and Everton so two out of three really really tough fixtures and Bowen is returning every single week more often than not with a goal rather than an assist he just looks so so dangerous he even scored off James Ward Prowse's free kick on the weekend really really happy with Jared Bowen and he even got a bonus point which he's very very likely to do week in week out and West Ham's fixtures burn Burnley, Crystal Palace, Spurs, Fulham, Wolves. They look really, really good. Anthony Gordon, look, um, I kept him on the bench last week for his goal against Arsenal. And, of course, I feel him against Bournemouth where they lose 2-0. Um, he doesn't really get involved in the game. The fixtures, I'm definitely going to hold on to Anthony Gordon un at least until game week 19. Chelsea at home and Man United at home are two games where I'll probably feel him. I think he will score in those. And then Everton away, Spurs away, Fulham at home, Luton away, and Forest at home. And then it gets to game week 20 where it's Liverpool, Man City, and Villa. So they're three really tough matches. I'll probably get Ring of Gorgon around game week 20, but he's got a good run coming up, and uh, yeah, I've got no worries about him. I just wonder whether he will play number nine, because he looked a little bit more out of the game. If Newcastle's creative um, wingers and midfielders can't get Gorgon in the game, I do worry about him, but I think he'll move out to the wing uh, soon enough, depending on when Isaac and Wilson are back. Captain Mo Salah, the FPL GOAT. I captained him. He gave me 32 points. He got two goals, a clean sheet, and three bonus points, as well as playing 90 minutes. 16 points for the normal player, 32 points for the captain like myself. He was a massive part in getting me through my 97 points this week. Him and Kostas Timikas, what a player Mohamed Salah is. He is just absolutely unbelievable. And the, the incredible thing is, he looked, he, didn't look, he looked out of the game for most of it, but he always just found those two goals. And even when he's having a bad game, he might find a penalty, which gives him some points. Mo Salah always finds the back of the net. He always plays 90 minutes, even if he's having a bad game. That is why he is the FPL GOAT, and that's why he's a very, very reliable captain this year. And I will feel game against Man City, and after that, Fulham, Sheffield United, Palace, Man United at home. He's going to score in all of those. Um, I mean, I'm keeping Salah to the end of the season. If you have him, you should. He's just unreal. Moussa Diaby, very lucky assist. I, I think on the assist, he didn't deserve to get an assist. I won't lie. I cannot believe he um, it, it even counted. I, I think it came off Tielemans last, but for some reason, the people at FPL gave him the assist. I'm not complaining. DRB's probably going to go for me in the next few weeks. He's getting quite a few lack of um, of returns. He only blanked, he's only blanked once since his 13-point haul against Luton, but next few matches, Spurs, Bournemouth. I'll probably get rid of him after the Bournemouth game. He's then got City, Arsenal, Brentford away. Then Sheffield United at home, but then Man United away. It's just a real mix of fixtures. He's got Newcastle a few weeks after that, so DRB's probably going to be going soon for me. For probably a guy like Brian and Burmo, uh, my plans at the moment is to get rid of DRB in game week 15, and, and Burmo from game week 15 onwards, his run looks really, really good. I'm going to miss his losing game in game week 14, but game week 15 onwards, Brighton away, then Sheffield United away, Villa at home, then he's sort of blank, but then Wolves, Palace, Forest. Um, 
look, I think Burma looks like a great option. He'll probably come in for Diaby for me in game week 15. Huang Hee Chan, I do worry about him without Pedro Neto in the side, but that being said, apart from this blank, he's only blanked once since game week 6, and funnily enough, that was against Luton. So, um, yeah, no, not too many concerns about Huang, especially considering his good run. He's got Fulham away next game week, then Arsenal, but then Burnley and Forest. Not too many concerns, but he'll make, my, he'll make his way out of my side soon enough. Maybe even for Pedro Neto when he's back. Erling Haaland, 16 points. I mean, take a bow. What do you want to say about Erling? He is just absolutely phenomenal. I really, really tinkered over the last few weeks whether to move him to a Darwin Nunes to improve guys like Saka and Son and get them into my side, even Kieran Trippier. But after a game like that, the 4-all four, four draw with Chelsea, two goals, one assist. After not getting a return, in a 6-1 win against Bournemouth, he really repaid the faith. Two goals, one assist, 16 points. Liverpool this week, you still feel him. Then he's got Spurs and Villa, two tougher games. Doesn't matter for Haaland. And after that, Luton, Palace, Blank, Everton, Sheffield United, Newcastle, Burnley, Brentford, Everton, Chelsea, Bournemouth. That's up until game week 26 in February, late February. Like, that is an insane run. I don't really care how much he costs, I think. That's the end of my thoughts of moving Haaland to Darwin. Ollie Watkins got himself a goal. Seems to just always find a goal. He blanked in the last two game weeks, frustratingly, against Forrest and Luton. But other than that, looks really, really good. He's their main goal threat. The run does really toughen up for Villa over the next few weeks. In game week 15 and 16, they have Man City and Arsenal back to back. But I think I'll hold on to Watkins. I've got bigger issues to fix. And even if Villa do just pinch one goal, there's a very high chance that the man to pinch that is Ollie Watkins. As I mentioned earlier with Robert Sanchez, his run coming up is very, very good. So I'll hold on to him. Julian Alvarez got himself five points off my bench. If I fielded him over Huang Hee Chan, which was actually actually a late decision to field uh, uh, Huang over Alvarez, then I actually would have reached the 100 point mark. But no, of course, I feel Hee Chan over Alvarez. And then Ben White and Doughty with those yellow flags. Doughty got himself two points, and obviously Ben White didn't play. Um, ben White, bit annoyed because I did get him in for that Burnley matchup, but it's not like his run coming up bad. He's got Brentford, Wolves, and Luton coming up, so. Yeah, not too concerned. I think Ben White will be in for the long run, and I'll try to get a guy in like Gabriel, uh, probably in for Diogo Dallo to hopefully keep a few clean sheets. All right, well, that's my recap for game week 12 of FPL. Let me know how you did down in the comments, and I will do a preview video for game week 13 next week. See you all next time, and hope you enjoy the international break. Nobody's enjoying the international break. <laughs> Cheers. Go!